Fox 61 Morning News starts now. Right now at 7 o'clock, it's a rainy morning commute, and look at that radar. Maybe a little bit of snow up in the hills. We'll get over to meteorologist Matt Scott with your forecast. He was a person who genuinely wanted to help people. A state representative killed by a wrong way driver. How Quinton Williams is being remembered for his work and his compassion. Also, a campus carjacking. What Yukon police are saying about a terrifying encounter one person had with two armed people. It was like you didn't know what to do in the moment. A wild ride on 95 ends in one man's arrest. Witnesses describing a very scary situation. Good morning. It is Friday. We're glad mm -hmm. you're with us here at Fox 61 at 7 America Areas. <laughs> and I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning and happy Friday from all of us. Starting with the forecast here as we take a live look at both Hartford and New Haven, where pretty much all of the state is seeing precipitation, mostly rain. Curious to see, though, we saw the radar showing a little bit of snow. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily mean it's falling and hitting the ground. It doesn't mean it's got, sticking. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, temperatures just about everywhere, Tim and Erica, are above freezing. Uh, so uh, for now, uh, we don't have uh, much to worry about for uh, icy spots, and that's certainly good news. That said, here we are in the morning rush, and we definitely have uh, what appears to be a lot of rain out there. It is mostly wet, uh, a little white out there. We're watching the northern hill towns uh, in the Litchfield Hills, uh, Tolland, Windham County may get a coating an inch, maybe two inches. And then in the weekend, hey, hey, hey it's the sun. Haven't seen that in a while. Here's a look at the radar. And for uh, the most part, again, all wet. You got a little bit of snow right now high high elevations up in the Litchfield Hills let's go down to New Haven that is a uh, big cluster of some moderate rain from uh, let's call it around Westville over to the uh, Merritt Wilbur Cross um, it's I mean it's it's fine it's I mean it's just the timing is bad uh, there's nothing that you need to worry about with this we'll go in even closer approaching Route 5 and Quinnipiac Avenue over the Pearl Harbor Memorial Bridge and then up to let's call it uh, East Rock and Hamden and North Haven now uh, you see there's a little gap in between cluster one and cluster two that's approaching that may fill in a little bit but the second wave is significantly lighter so you, and, and in terms of the snow I think that's going to be at least an issue farther to the north because temperature here I think are going to be too warm. We will watch them, see if anything changes, but you can see it really doesn't paint too, too much as it persists into the afternoon hours. Midday should be the real issue. All right, rain now, light rain later on. Don't worry about the temperatures. As long as they stay above freezing, uh, we'll be good to go. And as you can see right now, we are across the board. Let's see what all the precip's doing to the traffic. The road warriors out there knee deep in rush hour. What you got, Rachel? Hey, good morning, Matt. So in terms of incidents, we don't have any to report at this hour, which is nice to see a couple of slowdowns. We have heavy rain out there from time to time using those windshield wipers. So folks are going below the speed limit, which is what I would advise to do as well. Just take it slow on the roads. Uh, you can see that across the board. No major delays are out there either. We'll take a live look outside over in Waterbury along Route 8, where traffic is flowing just fine. Over in Middletown, 91, this is a northbound side. An earlier tractor trailer fire. We're just getting in some new details about that fire. No injuries were reported, but what was in the tractor trailer was unfortunately some fruit and vegetables. Uh, so there was a tractor trailer fire there, but that is clear. This was out by exits 18 and 20. Otherwise, over in New Haven, 91 heading towards the I-95 interchange looks good with wet roadways. And we have just some minor congestion taking you around the capital city, New Britain Ave to the Hartford Tunnel. You're looking at an eight minute drive, Tim and Erica much. We do appreciate it, certainly. Well, well, today the Connecticut community is mourning the loss of State Representative Quentin Q. Williams. Williams was killed Thursday in a wrong way crash. Yeah, Fox 61's Brooke Griffin is live in Middletown, where we're guessing a lot of people are going to show up later tonight to honor his life and his work. Brooke. Well, you're exactly right. That is exactly what's going to happen tonight. So many of Q Williams friends and family are expected to come out here. This is the town park in Middletown, and this is the area that they're going to be having a vigil tonight. Many of those people that are going to be in attendance saying they want to honor his life and his legacy in the best way they knew how, because he loved so much the town that he served, because this is where he grew up. Now, Representative Q Williams not only lived here 
here in Middletown, but of course, he also represented the town in the 100th district for the past four years. He was sworn into his third term just hours before he was killed in a car crash. Investigators say Williams was heading home from the inaugural ball on Route 9 when he was struck by a runway driver. Since word of Williams' death came out, friends, family, and government officials from across the country have expressed their shock and sadness over social media. Those who spoke with him at the inaugural ball say he spent the evening talking about how excited he was to get the new legislative session started. In addition to representing the 100th district, Williams also served as the executive director of the Middletown Business District, a position that he used to launch Middletown's very first restaurant week. Those who knew him say this was not only a loss for his friends, but a loss for this entire community. Somebody whose uh, energy and passion for his work and uh, optimism uh, was um, was infectious and was powerful. Q was a political ally, but more than that, he was family. In that Connecticut, and excuse me, and that vigil tonight is going to be at 7 o'clock here in Middletown. You can find it right at the gazebo, right in the middle of the park. Live in Middletown, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61 News. All right, Brooke, thanks so much for the update. And developing news right now that we are following closely. A carjacking on the Yukon campus in stores. Yeah, this all happened around 5 o'clock last night right near the Hilltop Apartments, which is residence housing. Police said two armed men walked up to the victim, demanded money, and then took off in the victim's gray Chevy SUV. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but police are looking for the car that they think those two uh, carjackers were in. They described it as a gray BMW. If any of you out there have information on what happened, please call the police. Also, uh, something to note here, UConn is still on winter break, so the campus, for the most part, is pretty quiet right now. Students will return to class on January 18th. A scary scene in Milford on Thursday morning after police arrested a wanted man following a chaotic chase. Now, this all happened near the off-ramp of exit 36 on the northbound side of I-95. Police are giving limited details on what led up to this chase. We did speak with Chanel Goldson. She was on her way to work when she got caught in the middle of it all. I look and there's this white car just zooming. I'm like, they're going to hit me. And he almost did hit me. It was pretty terrifying because there was like nowhere to go. You couldn't take cover. You were just stuck in the middle of it. Yeah, really scary there. Now, the inspector general is getting involved in this investigation because shots were fired. Police say no one was hurt, though. We will be watching this story for updates, and we'll bring that to you live on air online in our Fox 61 News app. 708 now, New Haven police have made a second arrest in a 2021 homicide. Police arrested 52-year-old Gerard Brown at his home in Waterbury Wednesday after a lengthy standoff. Brown is facing charges in connection with the death of 26-year-old Carlos Gore Jr. He was shot in the neck on Platte Avenue back on December 16th in 2021 and later died from his injuries. Police also arrested 53-year-old Paul Burrus last May in this same case. All right, turning now to the state's fight against COVID. The virus still at elevated levels in Connecticut. Uh, for whatever it's worth, and we're not quite sure because testing levels tend to go all over the place. About uh, one out of six or one out of, uh, yeah, about one out of six tests are coming back positive these days. Uh, the number of net hospitalizations has gone up uh, by 47 over the last week, and there's been 33 deaths in the past seven days. For the most part, this increase appears to be due to the latest variant, which is called XBB 1.5. The CDC said it's now responsible for at least 40% of cases nationwide. All right, 709 now, and a third candidate is running for mayor of Hartford in this year's election. Arun Arulampalam announced his candidacy at the Parkville Market on Wednesday. He is the CEO of Hartford Land Bank, and he ran for state treasurer in 2018. Arulampalam is running as a Democrat and says that he believes he has the experience to lead the capital city. We need a leader with a vision for the future of this city. And we need a leader who will love the people that they serve. I know that I have the experience to be ready to lead on day one. 
A former state senator and Superior Court Judge Eric Coleman and City Council Member Nick LeBron have also announced that they're running for mayor of Hartford on the Democratic side. Still to come here on the Fox 61 Morning News, the House Speaker saga continues. This is a dangerous moment for Americans. Why Democrats say this is a real cause for concern. Also coming up at 6.30, one of the most visible <laughs> lawyers in Connecticut, Norm Panis, has been suspended from practicing law in our state. We'll tell you about the new ruling against him. And uh, how, yes, yeah, sorry, at 7.30, it's at 6.30 coming up. And also, how long the well-known attorney is going to be barred from the courtroom? And we're taking a live look right now from our Fox 61 Storm Tracker in Hartford, getting you up close look of the roads there. Stick with us, that and a lot more coming up.